example that bridges the method that you just learned about, which was that decomposition method, splitting up a complicated cash flow into a couple of parts, with a new method, which is going to be time shifting. You're going to see that there are some problems that you're going to use both, and actually there are some problems like this one that are solvable with each. And we'll, we'll use this, this simple problem in order to show you how you can use both to effectively get the same answer. So let's start off with this asset here, and it's here in column B. And what it is, it's an asset that gives you $10 worth of benefit in period one, $10 worth, uh, $20 worth of benefit in period two, 30 in period three, 40 in period four, and 50 in period five. So it looks very much like a linear gradient because you can see from period to period to period, it has this constant change in the benefits that are there. That constant change is the cap G. Now, it's not really a linear gradient sequence because a real linear gradient series is supposed to have zero cost of benefits in period zero and zero cost of benefits in period one. That's kind of required in order for it to fit that classic strict form. So it doesn't quite fit. Now, you know from that section that you uh, did on decomposition, you can split this up into two parts, find out what the present worths of those are independently, and then add the two present worths together in order to find out the present worth of the sequence. Now, to a certain extent, I've, I've done this here. I've gotten one decomposition of all the, the infinite number that are available to you. But you can see that this is broken up into a constant series. And so you have this fixed dollar amount in periods 1 through n, where n is equal to 5 here. So that's that 10 bucks that's right there. And then you have this part that's a true linear gradient sequence. And so what you're looking at here is $10 in period 1, 20 in period 2, 30 in period 3, 40 in period 5. So it's a true linear gradient sequence. Now, we can calculate the present worth of both of those two sequences, add them up separately, and what we can get is the present worth of this original cash flow that we have over here. And that's what's described in this box right down here, box number A11. You're trying to find the present worth, and that's what that P is over on the left-hand side. And what you're saying is, is that this component right here, which is that 10 open parentheses P slash A, that there describes the present worth of this constant sequence right here. So it's 10 times looking for P, slash is red as giving you no A, whatever the interest rate is, we're not interested in that right now. And the cap N is equal to 5. And notice that the capital N is equal to, in a constant series, the number of non-zero benefits that are exactly the same from periods 1 through N. Now remember, this thing in the parentheses right here actually expands out into that complicated expression that you have on the back flap of your book. And so that expands up into um, 1 plus the interest rate, raised to the power of the number of periods that you have there. In this case, it's 5, less 1, divided by the interest rate, whatever that may be, times 1 plus the interest rate, raised to the power of the number of periods, which is 5 again. And you're just multiplying it by 10, which is supposed to be the constant uh, benefits that you receive in periods 1 through n. Now, the other part of it here is the present worth of the linear gradient series. And what you have right there in front of it, that 10, is actually the change that you have in the present worth from time period to time period. And so that's what that 10 is supposed to be. So it's read as, here's that change in, pre uh, in, in the value from time period to time period. You're looking for P, slash is read as given you know what the capital G is. Remember, that's what's right next to the parentheses, whatever the interest rate is. And then what you're looking at right there is the N on that linear gradient sequence. In this case, what you should do is think about it as look at the number of non-zero costs and benefits that are there, and you add one for the pot. And that's just the rule for the linear gradient and the linear gradient only. So this little equation right here, that thing in the parentheses, expands up into 1 plus i, that's the interest rate, raised to the power of n, in which case 5, less the product of the interest rate and the n, less 1, over the interest rate squared times 1 plus i to the n again. And that'll give you the present worth of those two. Now, again, that's thinking about it as if this was a problem you can solve only by decomposition. But there's another way of looking at it. Now, here's the other way of looking at it. I've created uh, another column here. It's labeled New Year. And what it is, it's a, it's a time scale. It's a little bit different. If you see this one, I've got the time period zero there. Over here on the new one, I've got the time period 1 that's sitting around right there. So it's offset just slightly. That's the reason why I had this time period negative 1 over here. Well, if you look at this time scale right here, this new one that I've created, this sequence here 
on this time scale is a perfect linear gradient sequence. It's got zero costs or benefits in time period zero. It's got zero costs or benefits in time period one. And then thereafter, it goes up by the right amount each year. So if you were to go ahead and write this out as, here it is, we're trying to find the present worth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just slide down just a little bit here and get uh, another representation of it. If we were to go ahead and calculate this component right here, which is I know what that change in the cash flow is going to be every single period. And I'm going to be looking for P, given I know what the G is, whatever the interest rate is. And that N right there is 6, which is going to be the number of non-zero costs or benefits plus 1 for the pot. I can calculate just this part right over here. And what it does is it transports all this value, concentrates it all the way back to right there. So it's the time period zero on this new scale that I have. Now remember, the question was, well, not what are the present worth of the assets at this new time period zero, but it's actually looking for this one right here. Well, what you can do is, is what you're trying to bring things from what is effectively time period negative one and bring them forward to time period zero. You know how to do that. It's the first piece of time shifting that you learned about, which is you can do that by just multiplying it by 1 plus the interest rate, raise the power of the number of time periods you're trying to move it. In this particular problem, all that we're doing is moving that value from time period negative 1 to time period 0. And you do that just by multiplying that value that you have there by 1 plus the interest rate. It moves it that one time period. Now, these two are going to evaluate to exactly the same thing. Now, there is your simple problem solved by both decomposition and time shifting. But you remember, time shifting is a very general technique that you can use and you will use all over the place. There's plenty of examples in the wiki on this.